I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome. Genesis chapter number 30, verse 25. I want us to observe now from a very spiritual and scriptural perspective the flow of spiritual intelligence. Are you receiving an impartation of spiritual intelligence as you listen? Yes. Chapter 30, verse 25. The Bible reads from the KJV. Now, this is an interesting story, so pay attention. It says, And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go. For you know my service which I have done for you. Now, this is interesting. And Laban said to him, please stay if I have found favor in your eyes. For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Spiritual intelligence. Now, anyone can have spiritual intelligence, whether they are from the demonic realm or they're from the kingdom of God. Now, Laban was a Syrian, and Syrians were idol worshippers, but they had enough intelligence to tell the work of God on the life of a person. That's spiritual intelligence. Now, he noticed the effects in his life. Matter of fact, Laban was a very bad idol worshipper. I'll prove it to you. He could, not, he could, however, notice from the effects that he had in his life after this person went into his life that mm -mm, something has changed. This is not how my life was. Ever since you entered your friend's life, what has changed? Or ever since your, your friend, ever since you start date, started dating him, are you afraid for your future? Hey. What kind of spirit are you planning on marrying? Because remember, you are a spirit. So when you begin dating, there's a spirit that has come into your life. Except this is a human spirit. All right, I'll, I'll leave that part. I'll, I'll be back. Let's stick to the scriptures. Praise God. Now, he says, I'm going to tell you something. The word experience, that word experience comes from a Hebrew word, nachash or nakash, which means magic or spells. The Amplified Classic puts, puts it this way. And Laban said to him, If I have found favor in your sight, I pray, do not go, for I have learned by experience and from omens and divination that the Lord has favored me with blessings on your account. Here's an interesting version called the Living Bible Translation. It reads, Please don't leave me, Laban replied, for a fortune teller that I consulted told me that the many blessings I've been enjoying are all because of your being here. Let me tell you something. In other words, one time Laban was sitting after some few months. He noticed the sheep are growing. The eels are multiplying. The business is working. He's like, I've been here 30 years. There's nothing like this that has happened. He said, mm -mm. there should be a trick somewhere here. It took spiritual intelligence. So what he did is that he went to seek a fortune teller to say, what am I doing right? That's what I was teaching workforce. I was teaching you a secret to my life. I said, when I notice that something right has been happening in my life, I do not just move on like nothing happened. What I do is I ask my quest myself a question, what did I do right? How come these things have worked the way they have worked? Spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligence. How come the numbers in church have grown? How come everything I touch is prospering? What is it that happened? It's very important for you to ask yourself those questions. What happened for me to get this good marriage? What happened for me to get this job? You forgot that there was a spirit that was released when the pastor said, come, we pray for you. Anyone who wants a job, you forget. Because it's been one month, you've forgotten. There's a point when a spirit came. Are you listening to me? So this guy went to consult a nganga, and the nganga told him, Brr, it's that boy, Yobo. And so he knew that he had to keep this guy. There are some people you have to keep close. Let me tell you one person who lacked spiritual intelligence. His name was Lot. Lot was with Abraham for a long time. 
God made a covenant with Abraham and told Abraham, I'll bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. I'll bless those who bless you. And then the Bible says, and Abraham in Genesis chapter number, chapter number 13, is it chapter number 13? The Bible begins to tell us that Abraham became very rich in gold, in silver, and in all these things. And because Lot was also considered someone to move with, you know, a big man in the clan. And then Abraham loved him. Lot thought, ah, I'm also just a blessed man because the blessing began to rub off on Lot. So he grew big-headed because he lacked spiritual intelligence. He didn't know the covenant was not made with Lot. The covenant was made with Abraham. But because of his relationship with Abraham, he became a participant. He became a recipient of the function of the spirit which was wielded to Abraham. So he grew himself. He had his own house. Everything he did was prospering. Then one time, the workers of Lot and the workers of Abraham we are arguing over the land. Hey, this is our grazing site. This is our grazing site. They, so they had a meeting and they said, okay, look, seeing that we are of the same family, we cannot have these people arguing. Let us go our separate ways. But look, can you imagine? Lot agreed. He said, yes. <laughs> he said, yes. And Abraham said, okay, you choose where you want to go. <laughs> and he, the Bible says, to add on to his lack of spiritual intelligence, he also lacked faith. He walked in the flesh. The Bible says, and Lord lifted his eyes. <laughs> he was seeing in the flesh. The Bible says, Lord lifted his eyes. And he saw where there was green pasture and it was nice. And he said, uh, I'll go the other side. Guess where he went? Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't know that was where Sodom and Gomorrah was. And Lot had a bad life. He found people who were gay and homosexual. His wife turned into a pillar of salt and his children raped him. Two of them, in case you think I got it wrong, two <laughs> girls, they raped him on a mountain. You go read the end of the book. Look at that. <laughs> That's why the Bible says we do not walk by sight, we walk by faith. Worship with us at the Household of Faith Church premises in Avondale, Simon Mwansa Kapwepo Road, next to Total Filling Station, every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m.